Hey girls and boys, it's Mrs. Davis here at home and today I'm working at my little desk space because we're going to be working on our non-fiction writing skills and as you can see behind me, I've got one of our search engines pulled up because I want to model that for you. I want to show you exactly how to search for a topic. So let's review. We're thinking about nonfiction. Remember that if you are an author of nonfiction, you are writing your texts to teach, inform, and explain real things. Now, when you're doing that as an author, you have to be an expert. You have to know the true facts. Before you even start writing, the first thing that you have to do is do some thinking. You have to think about what you want to write about. And in our last lesson, I made a long list of people, places, objects, animals. So I made a list to help me think about what I wanted to write about. Remember that long list? And then from that long list, I selected and narrowed it down to four topics that I find interesting and that I would want to learn more about so that I could teach and explain and inform other people. Remember my list, my topic list included Dr. Seuss because of course if I'm going to select someone to write about it needs to be a famous person, someone that people are familiar with. Sharks, Animals are always great to write about because there are so many creatures in the world and a lot of people are already familiar with lots of animals. So that's an easy subject to write about. The moon was a place that I find very interesting. So that was on my short list and then Legos because I was thinking, you know, a lot of people are familiar with Legos. They're very popular. They were around when I was young and they're still around today, but they've evolved. And remember, I selected sharks. Do you remember why I selected sharks? If you said, I had some books already here at my house, you are correct. That was one of the reasons I selected sharks. Now, the second thing you have to do after you make your list, of course, is select your topic. You only want to write about one at a time then you have to do your research. All good nonfiction books are filled with facts. They have to be true. They have to be filled with information that is correct. So in order to do that, you can't just write down what you think you know. You actually have to do research. You have to do research in many different places to help you gather all those facts. So one good source of information is nonfiction books, which I happen to have here at my house. I have this one, Science Vocabulary Reader and Incredible Sharks. These are two great resources. And the thing I like to do with nonfiction books when I am gathering my facts, I like to use different books because I like to compare the books. You know, one book may have certain facts and the other book might have different facts. They probably are gonna have a lot of similar facts, but they may have different facts. So that way I have more resources giving me more facts. And that's exactly what happened. When I was doing my research on sharks, each of these books gave me different information. And of course, we also said that you could check the internet. There are so many websites, but we discuss the fact that as you're doing your research, if you're doing it online, you want to make sure that you're searching in a safe way. So remember those little mini posters? There are a lot of good search engines for kids. This is the, the Kid Rex one, which I'm going to model for you exactly how to, um, to do that because there are a few little steps to that and I wanted to show you. This is the Google site, Google Kids, Kidtopia, and then Yahooligans. And of, of course there are several more, but I just gathered a few that might help you. So as you're gathering your facts, 
you have to take notes. And that was something I shared with you in our last writing workshop lesson. I have this research organizing sheet. I have my little boxes that have the headings at the top, where they live. Of course, if it's an animal, this one works really handy for that. And that's what I created it for. Movement and activities, looks and classifications. I'm gathering so much information, but I want to organize it so when I pull it back out to write, I've got it in a way that I can find it so writing is easier. Life cycle and babies, and then of course then just some interesting facts. And you can see I have been busy. This weekend I looked through this book, and then I looked through this book, and then I even searched the internet. And the way that I organized my information was I tried to use different writing tools. So I wrote in color, green color, and circled off in green in pencil and pen to show you the different places um, that I found my information. I didn't find it in all, all in one place. And I'm going to share with you my facts in just a minute. So I wanted to show you how to search on the internet. So I've got up here um, the Kid Rex already pulled up and I just went ahead and typed in shark facts. And then I'm going to click search. And remember I said that this is where you're definitely going to need a parent because there are so many, you can see already a list going on. Now, the first um, several of these are just, they're just commercials or advertisements. So you can see right here, it says add AD. You don't want to click on those. That's why you're going to need a big sister, a big brother, or an adult to help you. And there are so many sites, all of these, each one is a site that you could visit and get shark facts. And then there are pages and pages and pages. So you're definitely going to have to make some decisions about which ones to go to. Now, I usually go to the top, the top one or two, because usually the way a search is designed, the best websites are usually at the top of the lists. Those are the ones that are frequently visited. So those are the better ones. So you can pretty much count on that. So I just went ahead and this one says 12 shark facts. That one I had clicked and I, I gained some facts from that one, which I put down here. And I liked this one because number one, it's got some real photographs of sharks. So off the bat, I'm seeing the sharks. So whatever your topic is, when you type it in, you're going to see real photos, which are very interesting. And I really liked this one because it had those facts, just quick facts. So it's got fact one, fact two. Look at that eyeball. Pretty fascinating. That's shark skin. Yeah, I had fun when I was searching the internet for sure. This was a crazy fact. That one I wrote down. So that was one site that I clicked on in this search. And then I went to the second one. Again, the first couple are usually the best. I liked this one too, because again, there were some really cool pictures and then quick facts. Fact number one, two. So again, I was finding um, some very, you know, the research is very, um, it's, it's viewing it. So it's very interesting. So that's pretty cool. So I gained some facts just from going to those two. Now I wanted to show you also Google Kids up here. So it's the same thing. It's a search engine right here is where I click. Now on this one, I actually was searching for information about baby sharks and do not start seeing baby shark shark. Don't do it. <laughs> Okay, let me type in baby sharks because I didn't in my books and all of my books, I didn't find a lot of facts. And so I wanted to find out some more facts about um, shark babies. And the one I went to on this one was this one. I thought that picture was really cool. It's called the kids zone. So that one seemed like a good resource for me. And on this one, I learned a lot about shark babies and the way that sharks actually have their babies. And I found out there were three different ways. This is a 
shark developing in an egg sac. Isn't that cool? Pretty neat. So that's when I went to Google Kids to search, I was specifically looking for facts about baby sharks. So that's what I did there. And then here's Kidtopia. Now Kidtopia was pretty cool too. On this one, you can see there are some choices. So what I did, I explored and I saw this said animals. Cool. And then, ha, huh, sharks. Even cooler. And look, a video, Shark Week. Doo doo. So I could watch a video here. So again, you know, you're gonna wanna go to lots of sites and you're definitely gonna wanna do these kids safe searches. And there's a lot, a lot of kid friendly videos and things you can view and facts, quick facts. One more source. Don't forget Epic Books. Now I went to Epic Books, our Epic Books, and I actually, let me see if I can backtrack on Epic Books. So I went to our site, let me go one more page back. So here's our, um, this is our page. And when I clicked on here earlier, um, there was a choice for sharks, I think. But anyway, I'm gonna go up here, it says uh, search. Oh look, recent topics. You can tell I've been searching. And look at all these books about sharks. There's um, all kinds of shark books. So many choices in so little time. Hey, there's even one about drawing a shark. Cool. And hey, these girls are fabulous. If you've never checked out uh, their YouTube channel, they are awesome and they give great facts and they're funny too. So again, don't forget to check out Epic Books. I went to this first one, Oceans Alive, and I, this one was a read to me. Oceans Alive. And I listened to it. I sharks. actually went through the whole book. What are sharks? Sharks are fish. And that was one fact that I didn't see in any other book that I was looking through. I was trying to find out what classification sharks were in. And this one told me right off, sharks are fish. So that was great. Again, when you are doing your research, you want to pull from lots of sources. Books are fantastic and the internet is fabulous. If you are able to navigate it safely with the help of an adult. Now, when I was taking um, the time to look through all of my resources, I was also writing down my facts. So here's what I learned about sharks. Habitat, they live in oceans all over the world, and they also live in an aquarium. And I thought here would be great if I wanted to put a map of the world. You know all those text features and nonfiction books? I need to include some of those when I write my book. That would be a great one to include. Here's what I learned about their movements. They're super swimmers, and they swing their tail to move through the water, however, I learned from another source, because I've got this one in pencil, but this one's in pen. And I think this was from the internet, the one that I did in pen. They actually move their tail from side to side. So I get, gathered more information from different resources. They're agile swimmers. That means they're quick and easy. That would be a word I'm gonna include in my glossary. Faster than a dolphin or a squid. You know, nonfiction books are filled with comparisons. That's a great one. I'm definitely going to include that. Here's an activity I'm glad to know. They rarely attack people. That's a good one. Something I learned from the internet, that there are dangerous activities that happen with that involve sharks. They get caught in fishing nets and they can die that way. And also if there's plastic floating in, the water, they sometimes swallow it, and that can harm them too. I learned that actually from Epic Books. Um, so that was a good one. Here's what I learned about their body parts. I learned that they have strong tails, they have a dorsal fin for balance, and they have pectoral fins that help them steer. The front is called the snout, and they have, I don't know if you can see right here, these slits 
those are called gill slits and that that's how they breathe they pull in water and the water in the ocean has oxygen and they filter out that oxygen so they can breathe amazing i'm finding out so many cool facts they definitely are fierce and they have sharp teeth but what i found out about their teeth was in this book i found out they had sharp teeth but in this book i actually found found out they describe their teeth as razor sharp and then from the internet I discovered that even some sharks have flat teeth so they can crush crab shells and lobster shells. So not just that they have sharp teeth. Again, as a, an author of nonfiction writing, I want to be full of facts, lots of good facts. Their skin is, um, it feels like it was described like as sandpaper. It says their skin has tiny hard scales. And I learned from one source, if you, if you would rub a shark, obviously you're not going to hopefully, but if you do rub one this way, it will feel smooth. But if you go the opposite way, it will feel rough like sandpaper. And did you know that their shape, their skeleton shape is not formed with bones, but with cartilage, so that was going to be another word in my glossary. It's flexible. So if you take your nose and you turn it back and forth, that front part of your nose, that's cartilage. The shark's whole body feels this way. Cool. Wow. I learned that some sharks are as small as a pencil and some are as large as a school bus. Another comparison. Pretty cool. Now, one of those cool facts I learned from the internet was that if you see a fin above water, that is the dorsal fin, and sometimes it does pop up. The fin that you see popping up out of the water is that dorsal fin. Okay, here's what I learned about their eating habits. First of all, these were um, some extra facts that I learned from this book. I had learned a lot and had so much information that I actually, let me turn that that way, um, that I actually ran out of space. But up here it says um, they can go for weeks without eating because sometimes they eat such large amounts that they can go for a while without eating. And I learned this, they don't even chew. They just bite and swallow it whole. Wow. They're definitely hunters, and they're great hunters, I found out. What I found out from the internet is that they can either hide at the bottom of the ocean or they can uh, swim after their prey. Here's what they like to eat. Fish, crabs, lobsters, squid, seal, seals, and sea lions and even small whales and sometimes seabirds. I'm gonna be making a list of all the things they like to eat. They have great sense of smell. They have really good sight and even their sense of vibrations, the sense of feel, feeling vibrations helps them in their hunting. They can smell blood one mile away. Whoa. These guys are amazing. And I did find out that there is one type of shark called a whale shark. He only eats the tiniest of sea creatures. They're called plankton. That's cool. Now here's what I learned about babies. Babies are born ready to hunt. I learned that from this book right here. Some hatch from eggs. And when they are, their mother just leaves them and swims away. Sharks aren't very good at mothering. I found that out. Some sharks are inside eggs inside their mother and they will hatch inside that way. But then still some sharks are born like humans. They're born alive. Amazing. The more I'm studying sharks, the more interesting I find them. Now, that was a lot about, and but as you can see, I had to go to different resources to gain my information. Here are some really cool facts about sharks. 
there are, they have been on earth for over 4 million years. They can have up to 3,000 teeth. People collect shark teeth that wash up on the beach. Have you ever done that? I love to do that. Um, when they lose a tooth, they can replace that tooth. Usually the, by the next day, they have another new one. That would come in handy, wouldn't it? I, their skin feels rough, which I already told you about that. They have great eyesight, and that helps them to see underwater where it's so dark and there's not very much light. Now, remember that picture on the internet where the shark was upside down? That was a fact that I pulled from the internet. When you turn them upside down, of course, we're not going to turn them upside down, but when scientists do, they go into a trance. It's like they're hypnotized. They don't even move. Who knew? I didn't. Now, here are some other things I found out. Um, there are different colored sharks. One shark is pink and blue sharks can give birth to over 100 pups. Oh yeah, that's what baby sharks are called, pups. 100 pups at one time. Wow, that's a lot of babies. Now, here are some weird things that sharks like to eat. Yeah, they don't just eat sea creatures. They're kind of eating machines. Inside of sharks' bellies, they have found a barrel of nails cases of wine, shoes, and even musical instruments. It seems like they will eat just about anything. Well, that's a lot of research I've got. I've got so many facts collected that now I really feel confident that I could take my information and I could start writing about sharks. I'm ready for the next step. So, as we move into writing nonfiction pieces of work, whether we're just writing in our spiral or our writing notebook, or we're actually going to write a book about our nonfiction topic. The first thing we have to do is think, and then we have to do our research. Remember to use lots of sources take good notes, and then we're on to writing. That's our next step. All right, now here's what I want you to do. As we collected our list in our last session, and you guys were supposed to make a short list, maybe a little longer than mine, and then select one and show me a picture of the topic you're going to write about and research on. That was the first thing. Now today, I want you to start your research. Now that you've selected your topic, I want you to begin getting your facts. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a picture of these pages and I will send them to your family members via email or blooms so that you can take notes. However, if you don't have a printer at home, that's totally fine too. You can just take a plain piece of paper and you can section it off and you can put your titles and you can do your research that way. As long as you have a place to write your notes so that you have your facts and you're an expert on your topic, well, then you're ready. So, I want you to do some research now. And again, you're going to be doing your safe searches. And don't forget to check out Epic Books because you might not be like me. You might not have little collections of nonfiction books on more than, with more than one on the same topic. But Epic Books is filled. You saw all those books on sharks. So, you've got a wealth of books that you can use as great resources. There's also videos included in our Epic selections, so you can gain all the knowledge that you need right in Epic Books. And of course, you can also search the internet using your kids safe searches. Okay, you've got your work cut out for you researchers. This one 
this part of writing a nonfiction piece of, of writing takes a little bit of time, so you're going to want to get started right away collecting those facts. Okay, until our next writing workshop lesson, as always, have a good one and don't forget to send me a picture of your research and all of your notes that you've been taking. Okay.